Suppose I want to know the average gas mileage that cars get. I can collect a sample of cars and measure the mileage that these cars get, and I can say something about the average mileage of this sample of cars. What I can't talk about is the population average mileage, because that would require collecting mileage information on every car that exists. This is a frequent problem in statistics. We can readily observe measures about samples, but what we really want to know are the measures of the populations. And we can't know those without collecting more information than we can afford to collect. So to get around this problem, we employ what are called hypothesis tests. A hypothesis test provides information about the population measures. We begin by assuming that something is true about the population measure. We then collect samples of data in an attempt to refute or fail to refute this assumption that we've made. Consider an example. Suppose we have a bag of black and white marbles. We don't know how many of the marbles are white and how many are black. The proportion of white marbles in the bag is like a population measure. It's something that is unobserved. So let's begin by making an assumption. Let's assume that 10% of the marbles are white. We'll now draw marbles from the bag in an attempt to refute or fail to refute this assumption we've made. To keep the example simple, let's assume that when we draw a marble and look at it, we then put it back into the the bag so that the total number of marbles in the bag doesn't change. So we draw the first marble, the first marble is black, we draw another one, this marble is black, we draw a third and a fourth marble, these marbles are black, we draw a fifth marble and we get for the first time a white marble. We continue to draw and replace marbles until we have a sample of 20 marbles. Suppose that amongst this sample of 20 marbles, only one of them is white. That is, in our sample, we have 5% white marbles. The question now is, does this sample refute or fail to refute our assumption. We assumed that 10% of the marbles in the bag are white. Now, while we found 5% white marbles in our sample, we understand that by random chance, it's possible that we might draw a sample of 5% white marbles when, in fact, there are 10% white marbles in the bag. That is, we don't expect our sample to show exactly 10% white marbles. So what we will do is compare this sample that we've drawn to the measure that we hypothesized and ask the question, if our assumption is correct, how likely is it that we would have drawn a sample that looks like this? So think of it this way. One of two things is true. Either the bag really does contain 10% white marbles, and by random chance we happen to draw a sample that contains 5% white marbles, or the bag really doesn't contain 10% white marbles. To help us judge which of these two alternatives is more likely, we use a p-value. The p-value measures the probability of our observing what we observed, assuming that our hypothesis is indeed correct. So to measure the p-value, we need two things. We need our null hypothesis, the thing it is we're assuming to be true, and we need an alternative hypothesis the thing that will be true if our null hypothesis is false. There are three possible alternative hypotheses. If the proportion of white marbles in the bag is not 10%, then it's possible that it's less than 10%, or it's possible that it's greater than 10%, or it's possible that it's not equal to 10%. These are our three possible alternative hypotheses. To begin the hypothesis test, we select one of these. For example, suppose we select the alternative hypothesis that the population proportion of white marbles is less than 10%. To measure the p-value on a distribution, we show the thing we're assuming to be true, our null hypothesis, in the center of the distribution. And then we identify what we actually observe, the 5% white marbles. The p-value is the area from what we observe toward the alternative side of the distribution. In this case, it's the area from 0.05 to the left of the distribution. This area represents the probability of us having observed the sample we observed or a sample more extreme, assuming that our null hypothesis is in fact correct. In this case, it's the probability of us having drawn a sample of 5% or fewer white marbles, when in fact the bag contains 10% white marbles. Suppose we select the alternative hypothesis that the proportion of marbles in the bag is greater than 10%. Again, we picture the distribution. The center point of the distribution is what we're assuming to be true, that is, 10% of the marbles are white. We show what we observe, that is, a sample with 5% white marbles. The p-value is the area from what we observed toward the alternative side of the distribution, in this case, the area to the right. 
This area represents the probability of us drawing a sample containing 5% or more white marbles, when in fact the bag contains 10% white marbles. The third possible alternative hypothesis is that the bag does not contain 10% white marbles. There are two ways that the bag might not contain 10% white marbles. That is, it might contain fewer than 10% white marbles, or it may contain more than 10% white marbles. Again, we begin by picturing the distribution of all possible sample proportions of white marbles we might choose. The center point of the distribution is the thing we're assuming to be true, which is that 10% of the marbles are white. We then show on the distribution what we actually observed, a sample in which 5% of the marbles were white. The p-value for this hypothesis test is the area from what we observed toward the nearer tail of the distribution, multiplied by 2. This area represents the probability of us finding a bag of marbles that are as different or more different from what we assumed to be true than is the bag of marbles we actually observed. In other words, we observed a bag of marbles that has 5% fewer marbles than we anticipated. So the probability of finding a sample of marbles that contains 5% less than we anticipated or 5% more than we anticipated is the p-value for this hypothesis test. Now that we have the p-value, what do we do with it? The p-value will be a measure between 0 and 1. The closer to 1 the p-value is, the less evidence we have for rejecting the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. The lower the p-value is, the more evidence we have for rejecting the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. Statisticians typically draw a line at 0.01. A p-value of 0.01 or less, we say, provides very strong evidence against our null hypothesis as opposed to our alternative hypothesis. A p-value between 0.01 and 0.05, we say, provides strong evidence against our null hypothesis as opposed to our alternative hypothesis. And finally, a p-value between 0.05 and 0.10, we say, provides weak evidence against our null hypothesis as opposed to our alternative hypothesis. So we look at our sample of 20 marbles, one of which is white, and we can calculate the p-value that this sample represents, in this case, 0.22. 0.22 is well above 0.1, so we would say that our sample does not provide enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis.